In this video I will be competing in 10 1v1 matches against Grandmaster Risky Phil, the link to his channel will be in the description. Here are the whole rules but basically you get 1 point for winning going first and 2 points for winning going second. The player who has the most points after 10 games wins the competition. To make it fair half of the maps will be chosen by me while another half by my opponent. And for the first game I decided to pick Brazil Capital Conquest because I felt it's my strongest settings from the last 1v1 tournament I played but haven't played with these settings ever since, so hopefully I didn't lose my skill. As my first territory pick I decided to pick this territory as I thought it would be the best territory for my capital spot, and then with my opponent taking another territory in the same continent to prevent me from instantly getting troop bonus. As the second pick I decided to pick that territory which I was considering being another good capital spot so I picked it so my opponent couldn't choose it himself. And then my opponent picked that territory which with him not needing to select any territory to prevent me from getting continental bonuses, I knew it could have been likely that it could be his capital spot, but in overall it looked like a weird spot for a capital so I didn't really think he would place his capital here. Though I knew that it would be still possible depending on the territory setup. And this how the situation looked after we finished picking the territories and deploying our troops. With my opponent splitting his troops in two armies and picking the capital on the one which was accessible for me, I couldn't crush any of his armies. So I did this bold way of capturing these territories over here fortifying my whole army back which was a terrible play by me. First of all I should have realized that my opponent will go for the bottom continent, so the troops I've got in my turn I could have added to that territory without capturing territory next to it so my opponent wouldn't get access with his capital army to it, and probably I could have added some troops to that territory in the first place in the troops deployment sage before the beginning of the game. But even with capturing all of these territories over here, I could have still not blundered the game so badly if like I had fortified half of the troops in my capital while leaving half of the troops in that continent. As with my opponent capturing and properly guarding that continent, with getting only 5 troops in my turn I knew that I won't be able to invade it. So no idea how I missed that with me having these territories I will be blocked. Well I mean I didn't expect for my opponent to capture that continent in the first place. But the game wasn't lost for me yet, I realized if I wipe all the orange players territories out from the top, then he will be forced to unleash my biggest army next to him if he wants to invade me into all of my continents. But that was another terrible play by me, because my opponent's capital didn't become weak enough and I ended up having a bunch of these useless territories while my opponent was still getting additional troops. So I think my best play would have been to capture that two territories continent, and properly guard it, putting enough troops on another border, I think it would have balanced the orange player out, and I wouldn't have been in a such miserable situation anymore. But that didn't happen, and I knew that my last hope to win is by trying to take down my opponent's capital, I tried to wait for a little bit to potentially get a better opportunity but it never came and with getting 0% chance and bad manual rolls I lost the game. And after the first game I was really disappointed in myself, because I played it like a total noob and even gave my opponent flawless victory despite him going second. The result now is 0-2 with Grandmaster Risky Phil being in the lead but hopefully the things will change to my favor. Looking back to the manual setup. The bad thing is that I had both of these territories selected, I mean this one I picked by myself, and that one my opponent forced me to choose by leaving it as the last territory in the map. In the second game my opponent selected Spain with the world domination game mode, which I never played as 1v1 game as far as I recall, but maybe that's possible that I could have been challenged for a game or two long time ago. Anyway. The first territory choices were obvious my opponent was selecting the better territories in two troop continents while I had the worse ones so to prevent him from instantly getting troop bonus. Then my opponent missed the opportunity to grab this important territory as in doing so he would have forced me to take one of these two territories which would have blocked me the access to one of these two one border continents. 
and then my territory selection was more or less random so I've just tried picking the territories which were looking more disconnected for me. Also I would have preferred to get a spot to put my army to in which I would be able to access all of the continents without being blocked from any of them, or at least the most important ones. But since I didn't achieve that I decided to put my troops to two different armies. That was very possible that my opponent would try to capture and hold small continents, so my goal was to prevent that from happening. This is how our troops reveal looked like. My opponent decided to put his troops into one big army, so maybe to probably try holding both of these small continents next to it. Anyway, he added his newly gotten troops next to my other army's small continents, which personally I think wasn't the most ideal play for him but like I said I don't have the 1v1 experience in this map so I could be wrong. But what I would have done if I were orange is used newly gotten troops on capturing territories, and with his biggest army tried to guard the bottom left continent. As what happened is I invaded the orange player into all of his captured continents taking over them myself and having a high chance that I will end up holding some of them. And this is what happened. The orange player got a little a bit more luck than I was expecting, but besides that I still held some of them and then my turn with me receiving even 11 troops the game was over for the orange player. I won going second, so I get 2 points, and with that the result becomes 2-2 meaning that we are in the tie. Since my opponent selected the map which wasn't familiar to me, in the third game I decided to select a map which wouldn't be familiar for him as well. And I was right. It was grip of the North Capital Conquest. But besides with my opponent having no experience in this map, he immediately selected the best territory for the capital, which to be honest is overpowered territory for the capital which is much better than any of the territories in the rest of the map. And then for the rest territories picking stage he was more or less wise about it also. And it was very brilliant by him to leave the worst territories at the end. So I knew that as the second player it will be very hard for me to do something and most likely I will rely on the capital hit. So my plan didn't go as expected. This is how the situation looked after my opponent's first turn and I was wondering if I should add my new troops on my capital to immediately blitz it expecting losing like the same amount of troops if getting lucky, or to add my troops to another territory and try to invade him from the other border. And I went with the latter option which didn't go well for me as I've got a bad blitz roll and failed to invade him into one of his continents, so then with my capital army I just captured a bunch of territories to decrease his territorial troop bonus. Then in the second turn I've got extremely good blitz rolls to break through my opponent's continents. And then in the third turn I decided to just simply go for the capital's takedown, which I'm not sure if it was a good decision. Probably bad because it seemed that I would have taken the advantage over him the territory wise, but it was just more of a question for me whether my opponent had a set at 3 cards or not. But still I think that it would have been better for me to go capturing territories rather than going for capital in order to have higher chances to win. My opponent won going first, so now it's 2-3 with my opponent being in the lead. For the fourth game my opponent picked Simple World Capital Conquest. And as the first player I selected the mainland Europe territory which is usually the best territory to select for the capital. But this time it was even better than usually, as with these blizzards it made my capital possibility to split the map into two pieces and end up holding one of them. And I was thinking about the upper one, so I just added all of troops to my capital. But I should have definitely seen a bigger picture in expecting my opponent to pick the upper European territory as his capital with the troops split in the other side of the map. So by realizing that I messed up I decided to fortify half of the troops into Africa, so my opponent couldn't end up holding South America and receive extra troops for it. And everything went according to my plan my army got unleashed to break through South America. But unluckily I've got a bad blitz roll crushing his border army. But getting to his other South American army I decided to try out my luck using the manual rolls. And very surprisingly I was able to take his whole army down to make him trapped in the upper side. And with my opponent not being able to break through my capital it was game over for him. I won going first so I get one point. 
the result is even again with it being 3-3. For the fifth game I decided to pick United States world domination since I thought I highly improved since drastically losing in the last tourney's friendly United States matches. But obviously I knew that my opponent is supposed to be decent at these settings as well. But since beating him easily in the last world domination game on the Spain map, I thought it would still be a great choice. At the end of our territory's picking stage I was very happy about my setup as I've got a good place to add my whole army in the place which would be accessible to all of the continents of the map, which at the same time was the place of the map where my opponent couldn't have added his army next to it, as then he would have risked of getting a lot of his troops blocked like if I decided to actually put my troops to somewhere else. My opponent in his turn brought me down to even three territories which didn't really look too good for me. But I knew that I could still make a comeback if capturing enough of his territories as well or with him failing to break through some of my continents. And I decided to pay my attention on trying to capture more continents rather than trying to maximize the number of territories to capture. Which probably was the game breaking mistake for me. As with me making the troop splits I didn't capture as many territories as I could, and with my opponent not only having the advantage in the territories but also managing to break through all of my continents, I knew that the game was over for me. So I'm a little bit disappointed in myself about this game as I think I could have definitely done better than that, even if I still lost. Anyway, my opponent won going first, so the result becomes 3-4 with Grandmaster Risky Phil being in the lead. For the sixth game my opponent decided to pick a very well known 1v1ers map and settings combination which is Super Max Prison World Domination. In these settings the general territories picking strategy is to firstly prioritize picking all of the dead end territories, then the rest of the territories in the non-center continent then to pick the middle territory of the center continent and finally the border territories of the center continent for the last. And this is how our territory setup looked like. I predicted for my opponent to most likely go for these two continents, so I wanted to split my troops and two armies in these two territories, but then I thought that my opponent could potentially go for only one continent, so I decided to use another half of troops on capturing and trying to successfully hold a continent for myself but my opponent actually went for the two exact continents which I predicted him going for. So that was so unfortunate that I didn't actually go with the original plan as it would have countered him perfectly. But since I didn't, and since I would be able to hold a continent as well, besides that continent in which I had my biggest army, I went with a decision to capture other two as well. But unfortunately my opponent in his turn when wiping me out from this continent got way better blitz rolls than I expected and actually ended up taking fully that continent from me having still some troops left to guard it, so that totally messed up that game for me. And then after that the game probably would have been over for me no matter what I would have done, as my opponent actually got a set at 3 cards. And after this game my opponent gets one more point and the result becomes 3-5 with him being in the lead. For the seventh game I decided to pick World Domination on Simple World because I remember myself playing for a little bit on these settings like a year ago and having fun. But that probably was the worst idea ever to do it after not playing on these settings ever since. Because I messed this game up like a total noob and really felt being one for sure because it was just bizarre how I played. I wasn't properly thinking in it at all and for some reason treated it like it would be a capital conquest game. As the first thing I did is selected this territory while the best decision would have been to select this territory, as by selecting this territory I made for my opponent a potentially good spot to add his troops to, and then by selecting that very connected territory I could have made even more potential good territory spots for my opponent, but with me taking the upper Asian territory and those North American territories luckily it didn't cost me as many problems as it potentially could. This is how our territory setup looked at the end and I really predicted that my opponent will put his army into that territory, but by treating this game like it would be like a capital conquest game my main focus was to get one border Europe. Though that was possible for my opponent to add his troops into that European territory behind two. 
but the main reason behind me adding these troops here because for some reasons I expected to actually hold Europe like I would do in a capital conquest game. So yeah after the troops reveal I knew that I totally messed this game up and in my turn I didn't come up with anything good to do, so I knew the game will be lost for me so unless the orange player gets a bad blitz roll crushing my army. But obviously as an attacker with a big army he was supposed to get a good blitz roll and this is what happened. And after this game I felt so much dumb as I could have definitely won it if my mind had properly worked. But it didn't and I gave away 2 free points for my opponent with the result becoming 3-7. At this point it will be really hard to make a comeback from that but I'm going to try doing my best to achieve it. For the 8th game my opponent decided to pick Alcatraz Capital Conquest, I played some 1v1 games on Alcatraz like a year ago similarly when it comes to the Simple Worlds World Domination mode, but back then these Alcatraz 1v1 games were World Domination games and I believe I have never played a Capital Conquest 1. And with that I didn't really know which territory would be the best capital spot for me, I mean I predicted that it will be one of the borders but didn't figure out which one. And because of that I decided to pick one of very isolated territories. My opponent then picked this border territory and with that I realized that it might be the best capital territory of the map. So with that I decided to pick the border territory next to him so if he's going to add his capital here, then I could add my capital next to him, but obviously that was a dumb idea because the left middle continent actually has two borders instead of one like the left bottom and top continents. So with realizing that I decided to pick this territory which might be my actual capital spot. But by realizing that I wouldn't have as good expanding ability as my opponent and with that continent being worth fewer troops, and with additionally selecting a bunch of dead end territories in this continent, I came up with my actual capital spot which was going to be this territory. This is how our setup looked after us selecting the territories. And besides me putting a lot of troops to my capital spot I added some of them in this continent so to potentially prevent my opponent from capturing it. But he was prepared to counter my counter so I just decided to blitz his army so to potentially get an attacker's advantage. My opponent in his turn captured both of these continents and with me receiving a ton of troops I decided to rather actually try immediately blitzing my opponent's capital which I successfully did which my opponent successfully recaptured, well not that much successfully because with me getting a lot of troops I was going to blitz it easily again. And that made me be guaranteed winning the game even if my opponent successfully recaptured one of the capitals as then I will have blitzed that capital easily again. And after 8 games the result becomes 4-7 with Risky Fell still being in the lead with only 2 games being left. Meaning that for me to either win or tie I have to win both of the rest games with one of them being of me going second. For the ninth game I decided to pick classic world domination without blizzards as these were the settings I was recently played in public lobbies to get a brand new account to the grandmaster level. And I really enjoy beating a bunch of masters going second. And besides that I recently played three classic world domination games with Phil in which two of them I was going second and I beat Phil in one of these two games, so I thought if I go second then might get a good chance to beat him again, or if I go first, then I will get a very easy victory. And as you can see in this game I was going second. And this is how our setup looked after picking our territories. My opponent ended up capturing a bunch of territories which wouldn't have been that big of a problem if I wasn't blocked from Australia. I still capture a bunch of territories but that wasn't enough, and with that my opponent got a very easy victory with him going first. And while it was not that much of a challenge to beat most of the public lobby players going second, it's a totally different thing when facing another decent grandmaster, so I should have definitely added blizzards in this game if I wanted to make it more fair for the second player. After this game the result becomes 4-8 and with only one game being left it becomes impossible for me to make a comeback, but it's still very interesting to see if I get beaten so badly or if I bring my score closer to my opponent. For the 10th and final game my opponent decided to select Classic Capital Conquest. And he selected the territory which is usually the best for the capital spot which is North Africa. 
and I selected Middle East which is usually being used to counter-attack the first player, either it or Siam or Indonesia. And with my opponent knowing that information also, I decided to pick the territory of Brazil for my potential capital placement. And I guess my opponent didn't really realize or predict it that I could use it as my capital spot. As this is how our territory setup looked at the end and my Brazilian capital army wasn't blocked from the left side at all having a nice path to go to invade Australia. And this is what I did. My opponent then invaded me into South America and recaptured Europe. Which I invaded, and then in the same turn captured both of the Americas, so to at least hopefully receive troop bonus from South America which I did. I took the advantage over my opponent and with 3 rounds being already passed I predicted that my opponent will probably try to win by the capitals takedown after trading an A set, so I knew that I should keep my capital safe and don't over capture the territories. So in that turn I recaptured North America only capturing 4 territories in total. But luckily for my opponent he had A set at 3 cards, which gave him even 37% chance to blitz my capital and with getting good manual rolls he even increased that chance to even 41%. But luckily I was still favored and won the game going second getting 2 points. But it isn't enough to beat Risky Phil, so the final score becomes 6-8 with him winning the series. That was very well played by him so make sure to check his channel out, the link will be in the description. For more 1v1 strategy tips and tricks I would recommend clicking and watching the videos from 1v1 playlist. And who knows maybe one day you will become a professional 1v1 risk player also. Believe it and achieve it. Right now risk is such an undiscovered field so basically anyone could become one of the top players with putting enough of dedicated practice and efforts.